I wanted to stigmatize the way that we used to see our bodies naked. When I was watching porn when I was younger, all I saw was like the mainstream stuff, the stuff that's easily accessible, the, the toxic porn that's not really happening in real life. I work as a motivational speaker and um, a social activist. A lot of my work is based around inclusivity, diversity and representation. Basically, I'm a track artist, uh, means that I cross dress uh, from a male to a female as a career. Beauty or a beautiful body, it's more than just the physical aspect of what you look or how you look. It's got more to do with how you feel about yourself, uh, more to do with your mental health, your mental state, and if I wanted to put that all in a nutshell, it means freedom. Freedom to just be you. Glistening confidence in your eyes, for me, that is absolutely beautiful. Yeah, the way we can all connect with each other, find beauty within each other, lift each other up, is very beautiful. I think that if you acknowledge that you are beautiful, then you see everyone is beautiful. There's no boundary of beauty, gender, or their conceptions about that. Every fucking body has their own beauty. If you accept yourself the way that you are and you live that way, then you're beautiful and, and everything that you see will be too. Actually, I believe social media is a double-edged sword. Um, you can either follow people that are going to give you um, hunger suppressants for you to eat to maintain your body shape um, and you can go down there and practice very negative ways of self-care or you can follow great amazing people that are going to actually help you be kind to yourself. You look at a profile, is this person adding value to me? If they're not, the unfollow button's just there. I don't need anyone's validation, actually. Like, why am I doing this? I don't need to compare myself to the other profiles on Instagram. I don't need to do any of this in any sense. It's, it's like, I, I have my own validation. So I think with social media with me, um, it's a little bit different because I'm sharing other people's stories. Um, so in the beginning, I was kind of quite wary of that, quite nervous about doing it because I didn't know how people were going to respond. People completely open up to me, but I didn't share much about myself. Um, so about a year ago, I started to kind of use social media to start sharing a bit more kind of about myself as well. I have one, The Art of Loving Your Selfie, where I follow all these accounts that are so inspirational, and I repost a lot, and I'm able to inspire and motivate people. And then I have my personal Instagram, which I started when Instagram started, and I follow like more of what the ideal person should look like. And I really, truly realize the way, like, my mood and my mental health, how it shifts from what I'm using each account to the point that I stop using my personal one. When I do use it, I try to share personal stories and, like, on my personal account, I talk about body issues. I show my face without makeup and pimples and all these things that people used to feel so much shame about, but it's normal. I mean, when you look at someone on Instagram and then you see them in person and you realize that they don't look what like they do in their photos. It's crazy. So why are we idealizing these situations? Come on, everybody has sex. We should be legalized. It shouldn't be stoned, like, okay, in some countries still stoned. It should be legalized. It should be normalized. It should be fun. It should be enjoyable. It should be like the four girls in the series Sex and the City. It should be Samantha Jones. When I was watching porn when I was younger, all I saw was like the mainstream stuff, the stuff that's easily accessible, the, the toxic porn that's not really happening in real life, you know, just like the most accessible porn. It's usually coming from typically a very narrow-minded perspective of like big tits, big ass, come shot on the face and then leave, you know, kind of like very standardized porn that you can really access for free, right? You type in porn on the internet on Google, the first thing that comes up probably is somebody with big tits and a big ass and, you know, everything fake. And usually coming from a male director's perspective. I mean, everybody has their different taste for porn and for sex in general. But I think that what's easily accessible is, is a far representation of what it actually is. And I also post photos of women and men and photos get taken down if they're not censored and it strips the beauty of it. It kind of makes it seem more terrible than it actually is. 
I think it's just, it's talking more, just talking. <laughs> the more we talk about things, the more we see things, the more it becomes part of everyday life, which it is, so. Take ownership of your bodies, and I think, forget social media, forget the world, forget, you know, body positivity, fuck self-love, fuck everything that this society is wanting you to do, especially when you look online, you need to be body confident. You, no, you don't need to do anything. You need to build a relationship with yourself first. I always ask people, for someone that's gone through years and years and years and years and years of trauma, how the fuck can they one day wake up and say, I'm going to love myself now? It's not going to happen. You need to build a relationship with yourself. Social media is free, but in fact, this is not free. It is free to use, but it is not a free platform to express yourself or your opinion and your body, of course. Still, my content are deleted from social media because I have a makeup like a girl face. Even though it is a free platform, you have a choice to follow and get inspired from who you want to and you make a decision on that. But still, according to this kind of algorithm of social media, you have to follow what is considered should be followed.